Or in human history have we been richer, more advanced, more back. powerful? And yet, we feel overwhelmed in the face of rapid climate change. A fuller picture. Modern industrial society as we constructed it in the last 150 years is inherently destructive to the planet. Basically, everything we do to make our lives easier, safer... Is this going to be an individual responsibility video? Sponsored by like a mega corporation? A billionaire owned mega corporation uh, that tells you like, you know, you should just... know the opposite? Okay, good. And more comfortable is making things worse for the biosphere. The food we eat, the streets we walk on, the clothes we wear, the gadgets we use, the way we move around, and the pleasant temperatures we artificially create around us. While most people know about the serious impact of energy, beef, cars, and planes, many major polluters are barely ever talked about. The emissions leaking out of landfills are as significant as the emissions of all the jets in the air. More CO2 is released to run our homes than from all cars combined. And the emissions produced when making a new car is equivalent to building just two meters of road. So it is nice to switch to electric cars, but they won't solve anything if we keep building roads the same way. Fixing one small part of the industrial system is not enough. Each of the many different parts needs its own solution, and many of them aren't straightforward. But even where we know what to do, just because a solution exists, doesn't mean we're able or willing to implement it. There are many grey areas in the fight against rapid climate change. The most prominent one is the divide between rich and poor. Emissions versus poverty. There is a clear connection between the prosperity of a nation and its carbon emissions. In other words, richer people tend to cause more emissions. So the key to fixing climate change is simply for the world's richest to cut back on their extravagant lifestyles, right? While this would help, it wouldn't make the problem go away. This is because 63% of global emissions come from low to middle income countries. Countries where most people are not living extravagantly, but are trying to escape poverty at worst and achieve a comfortable lifestyle at best. The unfortunate reality is that currently, escaping poverty and becoming middle class- I love when motherfuckers are like, yo, Hassan, I'm looking directly at you. Hey, dumbass, we're all a part of that with respect to the rest of the planet. You know that, right? Like, you can fucking look at me all you want. You are rich. Like, if you can watch me on Twitch, your fucking carbon footprint is technically, with respect to the rest of the world, in the rich side, okay? You're on a laptop, you're on your fucking phone, you're literally taking advantage of like ISPs, you have internet service, you're a part of the rich when we're talking about fucking, you know, climate change. Like you're living in America, you're living in the Western world, like that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about like, you know, me versus uh, your dad. <laughs> I, I like that though. It's like, they're literally comparing, like, someone living in America to someone living in Africa. That's what they're talking about. That's the real difference between, like, uh, people's carbon footprint. Only 30% of the world has access to the internet? Is that true? I thought it was, I thought it was higher than that. Gas creates unavoidable emissions. So asking developing countries to cut emissions just looks like an attempt to keep them down. It's very hard to argue that a region should protect their primeval forests and spend money on solar panels instead of burning wood when it can't meet basic needs for significant parts of its population. But cutting back is not a popular demand. I love people saying, I love people saying like, dude, what the fuck do you mean? Like, I have negative income. Dude, it doesn't matter. You live in America. Like, that's not, more, that's not the point. When it comes to climate change, when it comes to anthropogenic climate change, like having negative income doesn't mean anything when you're comparing your carbon emissions to... Bow Bow, can you please explain it to motherfuckers, please? Instead of fucking memeing in the chat, come on, use your like vegan climate change propaganda for good for once in your goddamn life. Holy shit. Especially if the countries making these demands got rich by causing environmental damage in the past. So for billions of people, more emissions are a good thing, personally. 
when we forget about this, we tend to propose unworkable solutions. Take concrete. 8% of CO2 emissions are released by the concrete manufacturing industry. OK, cool. Stop using concrete, right? But right now, concrete is also a cheap and easy way for growing populations in developing countries to build affordable housing. And there are many examples like that. Even rich countries aren't immune from disagreeing about rapid climate change solutions. Banning coal, gas and oil from the energy mix is slowed down by heated discussions about what should replace them. The citizens can be strictly against nuclear power, but also oppose wind or solar infrastructure in their backyards. In principle, all of these issues can be overcome, but there are things we don't currently know how to overcome. The most problematic one is food. Emit or die. We will soon need to feed 10 billion people, and we don't know how to do that without emitting greenhouse gases. Because of the nature of modern food production that requires fertilizers or manure, uh -oh. it's impossible to have zero emissions food. Rice alone emits so much methane each year that it practically equals the emissions of all the air traffic in the world. What's worse is that the foods we like the most emit the most. 57% of food emissions come from animal-based foods, although they make up only 18% of the world's calories and 37% of its protein. And as people across the world grow richer, they want more meat. Traditional diets in most cultures were primarily plant-based with a little meat on top. But with the rise of industrial-style meat production and factory farming, meat has become a staple food a regular indulgence in developed countries and a symbol of status and wealth in developing countries. Today, about 40% of the world's habitable land is used for meat production in some form or another, the size of North and South America combined. This is land we could otherwise allow native ecosystems to regrow, like forests in the Amazon, and suck carbon out of the atmosphere, but instead, most of it is used to feed animals. The available solutions are uniquely able to make everybody on the political spectrum, rich or poor, unhappy. Meat is highly emotional and there are a lot of whataboutism arguments floating around, like comparing it to the worst sources of emissions. In the end, it's pretty simple. Eating less meat alone won't stop climate change, but we oh, all- thank God. Okay, good. All right, we're good. Boys, he said it. He said it before I had to say anything, okay? So we're fine. It just won't stop us, so we shouldn't do it. Also can't stop climate change without eating less meat. What? Uh, fuck you, dude! Shut up! That part is unimportant. It's just, I don't know why he brought that up. I don't know. That one's... He's German. I don't know what he's talking about. Let's not get into the nitty and the gritty. The same holds true for other things that are less crucial to our survival, but frankly not realistic to make go away. Like air travel. Oh. Wait, what about fucking cruise ships though? That's like, dude, I kind of want to make it my life's mission to just like eradicate the entire cruise liner industry. I feel like it is literally the most insane the absolute insane cruise ships what about container ships brother there is like the utility that you have with container ships is profound okay especially when you're comparing it to fucking cruise ships which has no utility whatsoever like you're you're like well, what about international travel brother that's basically what you're saying cruise ships are completely meaningless and a waste these kinds of tankers on the other hand are a fucking necessity for international travel and commerce so you know this is important cruise ships are not i'm 14 though so of course i'm like huh, why do we need international trade i don't get it Overseas shipping, mining, and the production of devices that play YouTube videos. So what does this mean? Do we need to give up our way of life, and can the poor never achieve it? Can't some technology save us so we can continue to drive our big cars and- Vegans actually contribute maximum levels of CO2 gas is common misconception. The collective size let out by people 
they catch in their propaganda tractor beam actually have made huge holes over Seattle, Austin, and Portland? <laughs> the fuck? And eat meat every day? Solutions versus expenses. In principle, this technology already exists. Direct air capture of CO2 draws carbon dioxide from the air so that it can be stored underground or transformed into products. So why aren't we implementing it in every industry everywhere? Because with the technology we have right now, this would cost some $10 trillion per year or half the United States GDP. This money has to come from somewhere and currently no one is offering it. Just dumping these costs on massive polluters like steel mills and coal power stations would double the cost of their products, and so these industries that operate on very tight profit margins would go bankrupt. Fuck, dude, that would be so... Terrible. Getting the government to pay for it seems logical, but a lot of state resources are actually tied up doing the opposite, like subsidizing... I was just about to say that we already do, we already do pay for it. We just pay for the other side of it. ...more than gas, which seems counterintuitive, but follows clear incentives. By artificially keeping fuel prices low, shipping and everyday goods are kept artificially cheap too, which has a major social impact on billions of people around the world. That creates political lobbies and incentives that perpetuate a cycle that makes it so hard to stop fossil fuel production. Meanwhile, very costly solutions for a far-off problem, like carbon capture, seem like they can wait, as technically nobody benefits from it right now. Some argue that a move away from capitalism is the only solution to this mess. Others insist that markets should be even freer, without any interventions like some- Yeah, some argue that we should use capital- we should end capitalism to solve this problem. And others are fucking assholes, okay? That's the- yeah, oh yeah, we need freer markets, as though, like, deregulation didn't land us squarely in this fucking problem to begin with. Like, Exxon had some of the top scientific minds recognize the dangers that they were fucking causing on the planet, like, 30 years before it even became a public conversation. And they saw it, and they were like, we need to bury this shit forever. So, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe those people should have been punished. Subsidies, and some suggest that we need what's referred to as degrowth and to cut back as a species overall. But the truth is, at least as of now, no political system is doing an impressive job at becoming truly sustainable and none have really done so in the past. We also don't have the time to figure this out and do a lot of experiments. We must implement solutions now. Not just to halt the release of all possible greenhouse gases, but also to start reducing the amount of CO2 in the air. It's too late to just mend our ways, we have to actively correct our past mistakes. With every year we waste, more extreme changes will be unavoidable. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Rapid climate change and the world we live in are complicated. So here is where you, dear viewer, come in again. Could you please fix the climate? A narrative of our time is that we are all responsible for rapid climate change, that everyone needs to play their part. Why don't you buy a new electric car? Why don't you replace your gas stove with an electric one? How about you double glaze your windows, stop eating meat and switch off your lights? Shifting responsibility from the largest carbon emitters to the average person, you, is much easier to do than solving problems. There's Some people think unregulated markets can solve racism? Yeah. By making a slave trade for all humans, not just black humans. So yeah, in that, in that sense, then yes. If you think libertarians won't sell like white children, you're out of your fucking mind. So yeah, in, in a way it will end... Uh, Racism, I guess, or just like kick it into overdrive. So, you know, if you think I'm lying to you, please read like a single old school libertarian thinker. Was it Roth? Who? Who advocated for the baby trade market, which is I'm not even kidding. That's like a literal thing. No, it wasn't Rand. It was Rothbard, right? Yes. Rothbard literally argued about selling children. That's right. 
as an extra bonus if solving rapid climate change sells a new product. If you don't have the money or time... It's awfully suspicious that, like, you know, four decades of deregulation, uh, steady deregulation, and, uh, you know, our, our neoliberal attitude to the free markets has only caused further monopolization. It's so strange. Don't know how that happened, but we should maybe just further deregulate, and maybe, maybe that'll change it. That's, that's what, that's what'll work, really. Nearly every single fucking industry that you absolutely fucking despise, that you hate, is an oligopoly. And the reason for why they're an oligopoly is because either they have a natural barrier of entry, okay, or they require a shitload of fucking, like, uh, they require shit, well, usually just a natural barrier of entry, and they require a shitload of subsidies, which, of course, libertarians will say is, is anti-libertarian. But all of those, all of those areas should have no competition. They should just be run by the government. Why don't we mo just modest proposal it and extinct ourselves? For these things, you should feel bad. It's an effective message because it's true. The quickest way to cut CO2 emissions would be if all rich populations on Earth drastically changed their lifestyles and if the people on the rise would not seek to achieve it, favoring the climate over comfort and wealth. If you're able to watch this video, that includes you. But we've just witnessed a global experiment in staying at home, not using transport and consuming less during the coronavirus pandemic. And all it did was reduce CO2 emissions by 7% for 2020. Asking average people to solve rapid climate change breaks down when we look at the scale of the problem. Personal contributions towards reducing greenhouse gas see? emissions are nice, but they are dwarfed by the systemic reality of global emissions. The concept of your personal carbon footprint was popularized by the oil producer BP in a 2005 ad campaign. Arguably one of the most effective and sinister pieces of propaganda that still seriously distracts all of us from the reality of the situation. If you eliminated 100% of your emissions for the rest of your life, you would save one second's worth of emissions from the global energy sector. Even uh. the most motivated person can't even make uh -huh. a tiny dent. <laughs> Dude, wait. I mean, what are the... The neoliberals, they get really mad at like the 100 companies produce like 75% of carbon emissions uh, argument. The neoliberals, they get mad at that? Are they... Are they, how do they feel about this video? Because Kurgazog is like kind of, you know, in their, in their realm. They do a lot of like liberal as uh, content. I mean, this is basically arriving at that conclusion that like systemic regulation is an absolute necessity. The elimination of the profit motive is also part of how this uh, has to be tackled, considering the fact that, or maybe I'm wrong, but. When we put together the dangers of rapid climate change, the scale of emissions and the lack of consensus over how to solve it, the challenge seems insurmountable. It can cause decision fatigue and moral licensing where you no longer feel bad about behaving in a counterproductive way. We have struggled a long time with this, which is why this video took us so long to make. So what can you actually do? There are many different takes and they are passionately discussed. We don't know who's right, so we can only offer you the Kurzgesagt perspective and opinion. What? Opinion part. What can you actually do? We need a different way to think and talk about rapid climate change. An all-encompassing systemic approach- They couldn't take a fucking approach to like, further deregulation is wrong in an in a, in a video where they're like, their most aggressive solution is carbon capture. And for some weird reason, they heavily talk about how corporations refuse to do anything about it and the government literally subsidizes the energy production industry instead of subsidizing against it like okay let's just okay nothing less than changing the fundamentals of our modern industrial societies as discussed in frustrating length the personal responsibility angle is overplayed for systemic changes in technology politics and the economy of this magnitude we need to influence the people at the levers. Right about Politicians that. Politicians need to know and feel strongly that the people care, that their own success depends on tackling rapid climate change. But hold on. If the system is designed in a way, if the system is designed in a fucking way where like, 
you know, Americans can't even get fucking health care, then why the fuck would politicians listen to the dumbass humans that have no power whatsoever, no political power at all? What do you do when you have two options in the United States of America and both parties are not doing anything to tackle climate change? What are you going to do? Who are you going to vote for? Oh, just vote. Okay, well, I want to vote for the guy that actually wants to do something and has the power to do something or will do something when they get into a position of power. Nah, just vote, dude. Okay, well, how do we get them to fucking do something? I just fucking vote. Vote extra hard next time. Yeah, just keep voting, dude. When governments and local politicians are reluctant to change laws that affect their biggest tax contributors or campaign donors, we need to vote them out and vote in people who respect science. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna vote out... <laughs> We're gonna vote out Joe Manchin in plus 35 fucking Vir uh, West Virginia. Plus 35 red West Virginia Joe Manchin. We're gonna vote him out. He makes like fucking five million dollars. Is a $5 million net worth from just coal, okay? From the coal uh, plant that his fucking brother owns now, or his son owns, that he has, like, absolutely a vested interest in. But yeah, we're just gonna fucking vote him out. I'm gonna vote extra hard, dude. I'm gonna vote for someone who says they respect science and understands that climate change is, uh, you know, a, a significant problem that will then go and, and not do anything about it. That's what I'm gonna vote for instead. Oh. We need to hold them accountable for implementing the most effective climate change strategies. Not waste our time with things like banning plastic straws, but by moving the big levers. Food, transportation and energy, while not forgetting the smaller ones like cement or construction. When industries fight against changing their ways... So don't vote? That's not what I'm saying. I'm a big... I love voting, okay? You are correct, but that's why people misunderstand the argument advocating for personal responsibility when it's really for social change that will eventually hopefully result in systemic change. Yeah, it's just, dude, I just, days like this where I see Kirsten Cinema being like, days like this where I read an article about how Kirsten Cinema got $750,000 from the pharmaceutical industry in an effort to stop a fucking $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation proposal from going through Congress because she got paid $750,000 to literally advocate against uh, pharmaceutical price bargaining by uh, Medicare that would greatly reduce the cost of Medicare for, Ameri for the American government and for old people in general and for everyone in general. Uh, that's, that's when I'm like, fuck, I'm going to vote as hard as I can, but like, it's literally not going to happen, okay? It's just like, I will come, I'll do a come tribute to the fucking ballot. But like, I don't know. I don't know what else to do there. For fear of losses or an honest attempt to protect their own, we need politicians to change the laws and incentivize the deployment of existing technologies and massively invest in innovation for the fields where we don't have great solutions yet. There's no reason that the profit interests of industries could not match the need to reduce carbon emissions as much as possible. And if they still don't cooperate, harsh punishments and regulation need to force or bankrupt them. It's still unrealistic that change of that scope can be forced onto a worldwide economy quickly enough because many low carbon technologies still need a lot of time and research, which means they're expensive. But more companies will make more efficient carbon capture systems, tasty meat alternatives, better batteries, cement alternatives and so on if there's a clear and growing demand. And if you're affluent enough, you can do your part by investing in these things right now while they're still expensive. These are the men. Motherfucker, you're a Demstock believing in state socialism, talking about flaws of electoral politics, that you aren't the person who thinks you can vote socialism in. I don't think you can vote socialism in. But I do think that I have a better idea than you do with respect to even building an anarcho-syndicalist future. And that is that without mainstreaming these fucking uh, ideologies, these ideas, and also getting people in positions of power that can do like marginal fucking change, in an effort to be able to open up the opportunities to unionize, for example, and build more coalitions, build more worker coalitions, you, you got nothing. You just got fantasies, okay? Good luck. Mechanisms that will drive the prices down later on. So this is basically what you can do. Vote at the ballot, vote with your wallet. There are too many opposing interests <laughs> and complex. Okay, that was cute as fuck, dude. This was so stupid. Prices down later on. So this is basically what you can do. 
Vote at the ballot. <laughs> vote with your wallet. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, that's so it sold me. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This, this ending is ridiculous. So that's what this video is then? You agree? No, I don't. Vote at the ballot. Vote with your wallet. We're fucking silly as fuck. They don't mention a single... They don't mention even fucking once the most significant power that you, as the average Joe, holds, okay? And that's not your fucking vote. Your vote is important, but clearly, it's like... Your vote is important, certainly. It's undeniable. But your vote is only as important as who you can vote for. And you can't fucking vote in people that aren't running. You can't vote in ideas that are not discussed. Okay? In a system that is completely fucking trapped, you have to, you know, you have to use other alternatives. Like, they're not, no, it's, I'm not even saying violence, shut up. You, people that say, like, Pepe la violence don't recognize that, like, you don't have anything to do violence with. You just don't. Like, you literally, you're ridiculous. Like, there is no revolution, okay? You know what revolution without fucking momentum is? Terrorism. You know what happens to people that do that? They go to jail, okay? They get fucking owned, okay? They get owned by the government, like, so aggressively before they go anywhere. And then people laugh at them. The goal is organizing. The only power that people actually do have, aside from fucking voting or whatever, unless you're white. No, even when you're white. The only power that people have is their power as workers, okay? And... Considering that we are all little labor aristocrats here in the United States, we don't even really have that kind of organizing opportunity as much anymore. So, January 6th, terrorists walking free would counter that, you dumbass. Yeah, okay. Yeah, working alongside a white supremacist fascist ideology is not going to get you caught up as a terrorism, or as a terrorist. I'm talking about like actual fucking disruptive ideologies not like brown shirts that are working side by side with the government dude this government is so ruthless people are saying eco-terrorism are so stupid you know how many fucking 65 year old hippie grandmas the fbi is like tracking and like literally jails the fuck are you guys talking about eco-terrorism okay bro there are too many opposing interests and complicated gray zones in the end if we truly get the systemic change we need everybody will be unhappy about some aspect of it. Only if we all accept that some solutions will have negative impacts for us can we have an honest conversation and make progress. Everybody will be a little unhappy, and that's okay. This is the best you can do. You can deal with the reality of the situation and promote your priorities through your behavior and your actions. And while you do so, you can eat less meat, fly less, or get an electric car. Not because you should feel guilty if you don't, or because you naively believe that you alone can stop rapid climate change, but to do your tiny, tiny part for the systemic change we need. This video was supported by Gates Notes, the personal blog of Bill Gates, where he writes about global health, climate change, and more. Check out GatesNotes.com to learn more about ways the world can work together to reach zero greenhouse gas emissions, or use the link below. And in the spirit of transparency, if you want to learn more about how we handle sponsorships like this one, we also have a Medium article describing how we do it. Thank you for watching. Wow. All these daily streams whether big or whether small so there he is again the sun is streaming the sun is streaming